I mean, you have the key to unleash a huge investigation. But if you do this, you're, they're going to kill you. Right. I mean, you, you, you understand that you're not going back to Venezuela unless you want to die. I, I, I'm, I'm talking to these new agencies that come and talk right. to me. And they say, listen, we want to talk to you about certain people that you have dealt with in Venezuela. And at that point, I retain a new attorney. Okay. Well, and, how, uh, how did you pay for the new attorney? This so, is so brilliant. This is amazing. This is amazing. I, I, I'm in Miami and I'm, I'm, I got 15 years and I have this new development. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going I'm to do like 180 years. And I tell somebody, listen, uh, I need help. And he goes, oh, talk to my attorney. Listen, I used to be a Medicare fraudster. Look at me. I got six years. My attorney is great. I said, dude, I need your attorney. Yeah. I said, what's the name? He goes, his name is Paul Petruzzi. Perfect. So I reach out to Paul Petruzzi and uh, he comes down and uh, he tells me, well, talk to me about Venezuela. So I'm talking to him and he goes, and you know all these people? And I said, yeah. And he goes like, no, 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 no. Them. I said, I have their emails that they sent to me saved on my computer. He goes, that's phenomenal. He said, listen, you have a great opportunity here. And you're either going to get indicted on that case or you have to be able to play your cards right because they, they need you. I said, well, how much is it going to cost me for you to represent me? He said, well, it's going to cost you $45,000. I said, well, dude, we have a situation. I said, I don't have any money. I already paid an attorney that screwed me. The feds took everything I had. I mean, but when I get out, I'm amazing. I'm an amazing salesperson. I can pack your office. He goes, well, that sounds great. How about we talk about it in 15 years when you get out? Right. And I'm like, listen, no, whoa, listen, man, give me a chance. He said, well, I'll come back in a couple of days. I go up to my unit and I talk to the guy. I said, listen, what do I do? He goes, pray. You need to go to your cell and you need to pray. And I said, uh, okay. And uh, then God is going to give me 45 grand? He goes, maybe. Maybe. It's happened before. I said, all right, I'm game. So I go to my cell and I pray. Man, and the next day I go, I got it. I got it. So I call a friend of mine and I said, listen, this is what I need you to do. I need you to send me the list of all my friends in Facebook. I'm going to weed some out. We're going to leave some in there. And I'm going to send an email blast to everybody on Facebook. She goes, okay, okay. So I write that email, which I read a couple of days ago for the first time. And it was February of 2013. And I say, uh, dear friends and family, uh, you haven't heard from me in a year. And it's not that I've been, you know, ghosting you. It's just that I got indicted and I got sentenced to 15 years. This is my case number. If you want to research it. And during that year, I've lost everything I had. I lost friends. I lost family. I lost money. But I'm holding on to the one thing that I'm giving up today, which is my dignity and my pride. I need to hire an attorney. He's going to charge me $45,000. And I need your help. If you can help me financially, that's fine. If you can't, your prayers are well received. Thank you for your help. Love you, you know, your friend, whatever. Well, dude. That thing went bonkers. I mean, I was reading the comments a day ago and people were doing garage sales. People were doing bake sales. I mean, my attorney will go visit me and go, listen, can you tell your friends to stop sending me $20 checks? I'm not the Catholic church. Right. Tell them to put money together and send it to me in a lump sum. He had to open a PayPal account so people could send him $2 here, $5 there, $10 here, $15 there. And they pay my attorney's fees. So it was unbelievable, unbelievable. When they, Paul called me and told me, listen, your bill is paid. Don't worry about it. Nice. So that's, that's, that's amazing. That's the power of social media. Yeah. You know, that's, a, that's the power of, of, you know, to be honest, I mean, I, you know, I, like I don't typically flatter people, but that, that's just the power of you and your friendship and what you mean to people and how much they like you. Because I tell you right now, and people like me. I ain't raising $45,000. Nobody's giving me $45,000. Yeah, 000. I guess. And that's what you realize. Yeah. Uh, like somebody told me the other day, man, you're not, you guys are not bad people. You are good people that did something wrong. Right. You know, and, and our nature has never, I mean, at the end of the day, I know you from prison and you know me from prison and yeah. we've helped each other. We helped a lot of people without having to help them, you know, because without needing to help them. I mean, right. Because, because we, you, that's what you do. That's your nature, you know? 
So I pay my attorney and Paul is happy and he takes me and he represents me and he's like, well, I, we need to talk. Tell me about these guys. So I said, well, I know this guy and, and he sent me this email about this person and he goes, do you know who these guys are? And I said, well, I, I think I know, but I, he goes, listen, man, the money that these people are using to buy this stuff goes pretty high up in the government. I mean, you have the key to unleash a huge investigation. But if you do this, you're, they're going to kill you. Right. I mean, you, you, you understand that you're not going back to Venezuela unless you want to die. And I said, all right, that's fine. Let's do this. You know what I mean? So I end up talking about different things. And one of the stories that call his attention the most is uh, at one point they call me over and they're like, listen, you need to come to Venezuela and you need to face us. You need to tell us where the money's at. And I'm like, dude, the money's gone. Yeah. No, no, no. We, because, and this happened to a lot of people. When people lose money, they think you have the money. Right. When people make money, they don't want you to have the money. So it's, 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 if things are bad, you better have some of my money. But if things are good, I don't want you to keep a dime of my money. You know? So, of course, they think I have the money and they're telling me, and I know they're going to kill my family and they're going to kill everybody. So I have to go there and I got to face them. So I show up and I'm facing them and they're like, Listen, you need to come up with the money. And I'm like, well, you got to let me go back to so the you States. Fl you fly to so Venezuela. Fly, at, at that time, I'm dating somebody else. Right. And I'm telling her, listen, I'm going to go to Venezuela. And uh, if I don't, first of all, if I don't call you in 24 hours, they kill me. Now, if I call you in 24 hours, then you know I'm alive. But you need to be like on, on top of the game because I may have to call you and tell you I'm getting out right now. Okay, okay, okay. So I land. This is just some chick you just met? Or you've been dating for... I've been dating her, but everybody that has taken a chance of... And, this is and a big commitment ev for, everybody for that an American has, chick that you've been dating for a month. So how long have you been dating her? Well, I've known her for a while, but ever since I... She was one of my salespeople, so she knew this whole investigation process and she knew the disaster. And, and uh, because I was married for a long, long, long time. And everybody that I dated kind of knew that I came with a lot of baggage. Right. But uh, you know that theory about everybody likes a bad boy? I think yes. everybody likes that story. Everybody likes to be with somebody that is complicated. It's, it's codependency, basically. I'm going to fix him. I'm going to turn him into a good guy. Yeah. You know? That way I can say I saved his life. So I go to Venezuela and I meet with these guys and they're like, listen, we're going to lock you in a hotel room and you're going to stay there until you get us the money. And I'm like, dude, I have to go back to the United States to get the money. They're like, no, no, no. You have to get us the money right now. I'm like, okay, let's, let's do this. So that night, they hire some prostitutes, and uh, they bring some prostitutes to the hotel room. And they're like, listen, we have some prostitutes, and we're going to be having sex in the room next door, but we're keeping an eye on you. And I'm like, listen, that's fine, no problem. So they're, they got these raunchy hookers, and they're like there and smoking and drinking, and it's just, it's just it looks, it was bad. bad, Who's, bad, who, bad. who are the people that are holding you? This is this, these are Venezuelan like military? Venezuelan uh, security people. Okay. You know, private, private, private. citizens. But the people that are telling you that you have to give them back the money are people that work for the government. Oh, absolutely. These and are people that are high up in the government. Which I later find out that these are people whose the source of the money is Colombian drug money. Right. And they're telling them, where is my money? Yeah. And they're telling me, listen, where is our money? Right. Because this guy wants his money. Yeah. These guys will kill us and we'll kill you if you don't come up with the money. The problem is you've already... The money's already gone to the developers. Developers have already spent the money gone. on their bills. It's over. It's gone. gone. And whatever gone. was in escrow, they took. Right. So it's listen, gone. it's gone. Your money is gone. But you always have this thing like, don't worry about it. I'll make up the money and I'll pay it back. Don't yeah, worry yeah, about yeah. it. Well, I got you're saying anything right. to stay of alive. Right. So I'm there and these guys right. get drunk. So, and I'm like, man, I still have my passport in my hand. So I call this girl and I'm like, listen, I'm going to try to get out of here. You need to get me on the first flight that leaves the United States, that leaves Venezuela to the United, to anywhere in the United States. I don't care where it lands. Anywhere. So she's researching and she goes, dude, there is one, but it's $1,500. I said, I don't care. I'm on that flight. And I'm going to call you when I'm on the plane. If I don't call you, by the time the plane takes off, they found out I left and I'm dead. And she's like, oh my God, listen, I can't deal with this stuff. I'm like, listen, we can break up when, when I get there. That's fine. But just get me there. Okay. All right. All right. So she buys a ticket. She's like, we got the reservation. Man, these guys are wasted. I sneak out of the hotel room. I call a cab and I'm sitting in the lobby going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. The cab comes in. I'm like, I got to go to the airport right now. American Airlines right now. He goes, do you have any luggage? I don't have anything. That, oh, I have, let's go. I need to get on a plane. I get on a plane. I call her. I come back. 
Now, the amazing, I'm going to go a couple steps ahead. When I go to Coleman that I meet you, right? I actually meet the Colombian guy who gave the guys the money, who gave the instructions to get their money any way they could. So basically, he was the guy that got the kidnapping set up. So I used to tell people, and I used to tell you all the time, listen, that's my kidnapper over there. I'm going to go say hi to him. So I will go say hi to him, and we'll talk, and, I, and I'll say, like, listen, man, you know, you, you know I got, was kidnapped because of you, right? Yeah. And he's like, well, I feel bad about that. I never really met you, so I didn't know who you were. I'm like, that doesn't change the fact that I was kidnapped because of you. Yeah, but, you know, if I knew, then, if I knew you then, maybe we would have come to terms. I'm like, maybe. Maybe not. So on that side note... Uh, I go back to Miami, you know, and uh, I'm Wait. telling my attorney that story about, you know, how I got oh, kidnapped. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he's like, oh, this is fantastic. He said, this is phenomenal. I mean, this is, this is exactly what, what we need, what they've been looking for. So I end up uh, talking to the federal authorities about that case. And this is all public records, obviously. Yeah. And this and is F- the FBI? Or? This is FBI and DEA and NSA and IRS. And uh, I remember the first time we met, I walked into the room. And, uh, of course, there's all these people. And uh, one of these guys goes, my name is whatever, is whatever, whatever, FBI. And somebody says, my name is this, and IRS. And the other guy says, my name is this, you know, DEA. And I said, well, my name is Juan Sanchez, FBOP. And they all started laughing and they're like, oh my God, this is, guy is great. This is the guy we need. He's hilarious. So we sat there and I told them the story and everything that is going on and they're taking notes. And they go, listen, you have a, you have a, a, a very odd memory. You seem to remember a lot of details and that's not common. I said, well, check them out. So they go check them out. They come back. They said, man, you hit it right on the head. That's exactly what we're looking for. And, uh, and let's move forward with this. So... They decide to leave me sitting there in Miami for a couple of months. Then they send me back to Coleman and I'm sitting there and nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. And, and I'm like, oh my God, this is, you know, I, I remember I called my attorney and I said, I felt like I just got invited to the prom. I had sex with my date and never called me again. Right. I just got screwed. And he's like, listen, they're working on it. They're working on it. It takes time. They bring me, they bring me back down to Miami and uh, I'm sitting there and out of the sudden, I'm watching the TV and no, I'm lying to you. I, I'm sitting in Miami and all of a sudden they take me downstairs. And when they take me downstairs, I'm, I'm handcuffed and I'm standing there and uh, there is a guard calling out names. And the guard is like, uh, Gonzalez, Martinez, Rodriguez, whoever. And it's one of the guys that kidnapped me. And I'm sitting there going like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So I'm facing the wall and I'm doing like this little happy dance handcuff. And the guard is like, hey dude, you gotta go pee? And I'm like, no, 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 no. So I see the guy on the corner of my eye. And I'm like, oh, my God, they busted this guy. So I go up to the unit. I call my attorney and I go, man, do you have news for me? And he goes, no, do you have news for me? And I said, yeah, you know, one of these guys from Venezuela just got arrested. And he goes, oh, my God, just hang up and, and I'll call you back. So long story short, he gets arrested. And then they tell me the story how he gets arrested. And I'm like, oh, I get it. This is a guy, so you understand the nature of these people. This is a guy that went to the American embassy in Venezuela after he got denied entry into the United States one day because he was bringing $100,000 cash and didn't declare. So they sent him back to Venezuela, told him, sir, we don't want you to come back ever again. He applies for a visa. So, the- so he came to the United States with 100000 in cash. In cash, because that's how they move money Back from yeah, yeah, Venezuela, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they don't believe in transfer. They just bring bags of money. And that's why the change of law right now, where they're basically saying you cannot do business with anybody from Venezuela in cash. Right. So he came to the United States with 100000 in cash, said, de- de- didn't declare it, and they caught him while he's in immigration as he's coming through. Correct. He's extorting me by this time. I'm already his victim. So he's calling me from immigration. You have to get me out of here. You have to get me out of here. And I'm sitting there going, dude, How? Right. You're, you're on the other side of the fence. Right. Well, you got to fix something. You got to figure out something. So I'm making calls to attorneys. He finally gets sent back to Venezuela. And that puts more pressure on me because now they're blaming this on me because everything that happened, it was because of me. Right. So they're like, listen, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you have to bring me back to the United States. I'm like, dude, the only way I can tell you to do it is go to the embassy and try to get a visa again. 
So, <coughs> excuse me. He goes there. He gets denied. He calls me. He goes, your idea didn't work. I got denied. I said, no. It has nothing to do with my idea. It has to do with the fact that you brought a hundred grand cash. Right. Well, you got to fix it. So, or, you know, we're going to kill your family. Remember, we dismember this guy. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay. So I get arrested and the agents are telling me like, listen, how do we bring these people from Venezuela here? Because there is no extradition. Right. And this is a member of the government. They're yeah, he's gonna... a member of the government. And he's not stupid. I said, well, he was kind of stupid. There is one thing you can do. He applied for a visa once and uh, they denied him. Maybe if you give him a visa, he'll come to the United States. He goes, you think so? And I said, I think so. Well, time goes by and I'm reading the newspapers and guess what happens? This guy is sitting at home one day eating breakfast and he gets a call from the American embassy. And they tell him, hey, Mr. So-and-so, we made a mistake. We want you to come to America. The guy goes to the embassy, gets his visa, comes back home and tells his family, pack your stuff. We're going to Disney. So the guy has literally like Mickey Mouse shirts and ears and the whole family. And he's his wife, his kid, everybody. He gets on the plane, lands in Miami. And sure enough, DEA is waiting for him on the gate. So he kept saying, because I remember I'm, when you I'm, showed me the article. I'm reading this article, <laughs> and he's like, it was like a booby trap. I landed in a booby trap. And I'm like, well, yes, you did. But these guys don't understand that the United States doesn't work like that. Once they said no, they said no. Right. You're not coming in again. So that case happened, and uh, because I became... Wait, in Venezuela, something somebody says, no, you can make a call, you can talk to a buddy, so my brother works for so-and-so, I can give this guy some money. Like, you can always fix a situation in Venezuela. And remember, these are the guys that fix the situations in Venezuela. So that's why they kept telling me, you have to fix it, because they know how to fix it in Venezuela. Right. And I had to explain to them, that's not how it works in here. There's nobody I can pay off, right. you know? That's a crime. Mind you, I was already breaking the law on my own and doing my financial crimes. Right. Okay. So thank God that happened because I had to expose the case and I had to expose the extortion and I had to expose the abuse and, and the fact that my family was at risk. And, and I had to talk to my kids and say, listen, if I do this, my life is at risk. You know, I, I may get killed because of this. You guys, we, we got to put it on the balance, you know. And uh, can, can I ask you a question? You keep yeah. saying they were extorting you. The extortion, they're saying, look, if you don't get us our money back, we're going to kill you or your family, whatever. But weren't they also, cause only, cause I've, only because I know, I, I've heard the story, like, didn't you also, like, you lost all, a bunch of their money. Didn't you convince them to give you more money? And that was a problem because I didn't have, really had to convince him that much. So you, but, uh, you they already, li listen, I just want to make this clear. They already feel like you owe them hundreds of thousands of dollars. They've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And you basically go to them and you say, I can get your money back. I'm trying, but you have to give me more money to do it. Because they so were happens. offering me the money. Okay. They're like, listen, we have to move this money and you have to move it. And I said, well, if you want to make your money, if you want to recover the money, we need to reinvest money to make money. That's how it works. So... This, this was like digging a hole to cover the other hole, and it just became, it was, it was just, it was, it was. But they sent you insane. more money. But they sent more money. And listen, if I, unfortunately, if I pick up the phone today and I said, I think I got to figure out, guys, we can't, he, they'll send money. Because the amount of money that they have is ridiculous. Right. And, and then, but the amount of money that they have that's ridiculous, and they're getting money from the cartels. Oh, they're laundering cartel money. Correct. Now, I grew up here. I didn't grow up there. So the, 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 the source of the money, to me, was never disclosed. Right. So it's like, listen, we have this money. We need to move it over there. If you don't move it for us, we're going to kill you. And if right. you don't give us your money, our money back, we're going to kill you. Right. I know I and, read that in your transcripts and, where, they, where you, they, you were, it just kept getting worse and worse because they kept threatening you. Yes. To, you have to do this or we'll do this. So it, the, the threats got worse and worse, plus they the videotape. And escalating. The whole thing. It Correct. kept escalating. And once you were in it, it was just. I mean, I think I have been in prison for like six months. And I told the federal government, I said, listen, if you want me to give you some information, I need my laptop and I need my cell phone. Right. So they bring me my cell phone. And I show the agents. I'm like, look this, look at this. 
they had to write it down because it was something like 780 missed calls from these people in like 30 days. Just because I wasn't picking up the phone. I was arrested. Yeah. But they were like, listen, you need to call us back. It's like, it's like the crazy girlfriend. They'll be like, listen, you need to call us back. We need to talk. Hey, why aren't you picking up my phones? Listen, we're going to kill you. We know you're hiding. Then they'll call again. Hey, dude, sorry about that. Listen, we need, <laughs> <laughs> listen, we need to talk again. And I'll be like, dude, this is insane. So even the agents were like, man, these guys were playing a number on you. I mean, you, 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 you know, you, you were definitely, definitely under pressure. So they finally get indicted. One of them gets arrested. The other ones are still in Venezuela. It's a big case that is, is according to my transcripts, is one of the largest cases in the hemisphere yeah. that got exposed at that time. And, uh, and uh, I benefited from it, of course. Right. You know? Well, weren't you... Didn't you get in that? Didn't the CIA show up one time? The CIA showed up at one time. The people that I didn't know showed up at one time. Like I, I was getting, I mean, I was I was a golden boy. Yeah, yeah. Because I was the only one that spoke English, the only one that had that was truly a victim of their abuse. Because everybody else was a co-defendant, so right. they don't want to talk because they're incriminating themselves in the crime. Right. I was the one that they put the gun to his head and say, "Listen, you gotta commit this crime, or we'll kill you." Doesn't make it less of a crime, but it makes me a victim of the crime, you know? And, and the government knew that I was willing to risk my life for th- to provide them some kind of information to help me in my case because I have gone 15 years. I have gone over-sentenced to start yeah. with. So it took a while, but they corrected my sentence, and I went down to nine and a half years, which is still a lot of time. Yeah. And then I ended up doing uh, eight years and a month. In federal prison. 